probably wondering what the heck just happened and how did I do that? Well, it's time to find out all of the chemistry behind that chemical reaction. This chemical reaction is something called the iodine clock reaction. So if you go in and Google iodine clock, you will find the instructions on how to do it. And I linked where I was getting my information for in the description below. And it's a simple chemical reaction that uses reduction and oxidation chemistry, which if that sounds familiar to you, at what all of my film chemistry videos were about, reduction and oxidation reactions, to create a really cool color change. So to start with, we actually have three solutions. So we have one that is potassium iodate solution, that is just potassium iodate powder dissolved in water. We have sodium bisulfite, which came in a powder form, so I had to dissolve that in water myself, and I have that in this cup. We love working in a kitchen with the best tools we have. And then finally, we needed a starch solution. So this is uh, five grams of cornstarch dissolved into 500 grams of water facilitated by heating up the water to dissolve the cornstarch, at least partially. So I have my three different solutions and now we need to pour them woo, into the test tubes. So if you notice, I have three sets of two test tubes each. And in one of these test tubes, is going to go the, sorry, you gotta look at my nose, is gonna go some potassium iodate solution, water, and the starch solution. In the second test tube, the sodium bisulfite solution is going to go in here to make solutions A and solutions B, which is what I poured together to start the chemical reaction. But before I can start filling these, we have to safety up. All right, I'm safety up. <laughs> now I can start filling them. Lab safety is always the most important thing. 10 and 50. 50, 30 divided by 2 is 15. 50 plus 50 is 65. 65. Yo! Yeah. All right, let's try that again. All right, now that I've recalculated, it's time to fill them. Boop, boop. So that's all the chemicals mixed up. And the next step now, we can just mix solution B into all the solution A's. And we already know what happens, but we need to see it again. Yay! turn the fully blue black color and then this one started to and when I shook it it went away and then this one didn't at all which could possibly do to my be due to my measurement abilities but also has a little bit to do with what's going on inside of these test tubes so let's take a deeper look at that chemistry let's discuss what is going on within those test tubes so I've written out a series of four equations and don't run yet I know they're scary looking but I promise I'll break them down step by step and we're looking at how this color change occurs. So anywhere you see an IO3 or I03, that is our potassium iodate ion. So that's the iodate ion. And anywhere you see an HSO3, that is our hydrogen, or that is our bisulfite, which was attached to our sodium before, but now it's attached to a hydrogen. But same thing. So the potassium iodate, the iodate anion, and the bisulfite anion, eh, anion are what's going to be important here. So in the first stage of the reaction, the iodate, again, and the sulf bisulfite are reacting together to form the iodide anion, so iodide, plus some other byproducts. And what's occurring here is the HSO3- is reducing 
for reducing the potassium iodate. Remember, reduction oxidation reactions? If we're reducing something, it has gained an electron. So that means it stole an electron from the hydrogen bisulfite or the sodium bisulfite. Stole an electron, the iodate ion gets reduced and becomes iodide. In this second reaction, we again have a reaction between the iodate, so that's the iodate, and some iodide anions. That's going to end up forming triiodide because it's got three iodines in it. So that forms triiodide. So as more iodide react, as more iodide anions are being formed, we end up also having a secondary reaction where they can go in here with more iodate and form triiodide. And then we come down to our third reaction and we have another oxidation or reduction oxidation reaction going on between that triiodide we just formed and the hydrogen bisulfite. So when this occurs, again, the hydrogen bisulfite is going to reduce our triiodide and form again more normal iodide. And this is just going to keep going. We're going to have formations of triiodide and iodide until we run out of the sodium bisulfite. So when all the sodium bisulfite is gone, we are just going to end up having the production of triiodide, right? Because if we get rid of, sodium, of all the hydrogen bisulfite, then the only reaction that can run on the screen is the second one with the iodate and the iodide to form triiodide. The triiodide then comes down in this final reaction, reacts with the starch and goes to form that starch iodide complex which is what is that blue color. So that's why putting in different amounts of potassium iodate can cause different reactions to occur at different times because it's affecting how fast all these top three reactions occur. But when, when any way you slice it, once you're out of the, once you're out of the sodium bisulfite, you only are going to form the triiodide, which can react with starch and form the blue complex. Hopefully that made some sense. Thank you all so much for watching this video today and I hope you enjoyed some of this chemistry. I love chemistry. I think it's so much fun because there's such cool color changes, making the chemicals, and it's just fun. Uh, yeah, chemistry is just fun. So we learned a little bit more about reduction and oxidation, got to see a cool color change, and add a lot of good sciencey fun. So again, thank you for watching. Please like this video, subscribe to my channel, follow me on Instagram, and keep it sciencey.